Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a mineralogy lesson to share with you today. We're working through our live education Waldorf curriculum and today I am doing a companion lesson that goes with our limestone cycle lesson. So this is part of the same lesson that I ended up doing an additional illustration and lesson specifically on the water cycle because I felt like this lesson complemented the limestone cycle really well. It ended up becoming its own lesson in the end just because of the time it took to do the illustration and the time it takes to present this lesson, but originally I had wanted to put them together. I ended up doing this separately, even though I find that they coordinate really well. Now for the previous lesson on the limestone cycle, I did that on the onion skin that separates these two pages so that on one page, almost a transparent page, you see the limestone cycle and then on this page you see the water cycle. I am working through our main lesson books rather than doing these illustrations as chalk drawings on our chalkboard. I am just working with my 13 year old daughter and I found this to be an easier way to present these lessons. Lessons. One other thing that I'm doing a little bit differently is that I am preparing these lessons in advance of presenting them. And this has allowed me to do some additional research to understand these lessons prior to presenting them. I'm also doing the illustrations ahead of time and I'm also doing my own narration as a way to process the information in preparation for delivering these lessons. And I really like this approach, but I did not always have the time to do this in the past. I did rely on the curriculum to read these lessons aloud, which that is not the purpose of the curriculum. If you have this particular curriculum, the lessons are really inspiration for the teacher to then do her research or to read the content that is in the curriculum so that she can or he can deliver these lessons orally. This time around, since I'm down to just homeschooling my one child, I find that I've got a little bit more time to present these lessons. Additionally, I really like this subject area a lot, and so I am happy to dive into these different topics a little bit more in preparation for presentation. If this is not your favorite subject area, then by all means, resorting to books to read aloud is an excellent way to go. I just happen to find this really fascinating on my own. So I am including the water cycle as part of the limestone cycle lesson. And while we already know this through our previous lessons in science, I found that having an illustration and really seeing the whole cycle worked well in understanding how everything on this planet is recycled in one way or another. Through the limestone cycle, you see that calcium and other minerals are used, transported, redeposited, dissolved again and used once again by animals or plants. We see this with the rock cycle where rocks are subducted down into the magma where they are melted entirely or they're warmed and transformed into new rocks. And then here we're seeing it again with the water cycle we can see that the water goes through these different stages and one thing that I really like about this illustration which I did find online and I specifically chose because it had more details than some of the other water cycles is that it shows water storage in three different areas which I really appreciate because most of the water cycles don't show water storage or rather it's not part of the water cycle as much as this illustration shows it. So we can see that water storage uh, is in the ocean, it happens in the atmosphere, and it happens again in snowpack on the top of mountains or in glaciers. I especially liked it because of the detail as well as all the captions that are included in this illustration. And because I don't have a written portion for this lesson, I am including all of the captions as well. And I did consider adding more details to each of these captions, 
but if I was going to do that, especially using the fountain pen, it would have been easier to do this before all of the color pencil. And so instead of adding too many additional details, I did go ahead and write all of the captions that were included in the illustration before I did too much of the color pencil, only because the fountain pen doesn't stick that well over color pencil, I think because of the wax content that's in color pencils. So that's one tip that if you're going to label everything, even if you've done it after you've done all of your color pencils, there is a remedy for that. You can just label it with numbers or letters and then add all of the details in a little table on an adjoining page or somewhere else on the illustration where you haven't colored it in too much. Here's one more look at this lesson as well as our limestone cycle and the written portion that goes along with this very large two-part lesson. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. It has all of the tutorials, projects, and resources that we've used for our earth science, geology, and mineralogy main lesson blocks. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.